Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Havik Juster and in this video we discuss the technical data sheet of Bestix. We will have a look at the different properties, what they mean, how to read them and how to use them. Okay, let's get started. Let's have a look at the content of the video. So we will discuss the most common data sheet properties of thermoplastic materials. I will explain the properties, including also the usefulness and the limitations, and also how we can use the TDS, uh, as it called, abbreviated for material selection. So, a general overview of technical data sheets. They contain performance characteristics, which are measured at room temperature and represent usually just a single point. And the performance characteristics are always related to failure events. And when you think of plastic part design, we don't want that this is not acceptable for engineering plastic products that this fails. So what is meant by this? For example, tensile strength at yield and elongation at break, they represent the material performance and this and tensile uh, uh, strange uh, strength uh, properties is one of the first things we have a look at. However, when you think of tensile yield and break, these are not the desired responses we want to see in polymer parts when they are used under load. Um, and uh, so this is the, the first thing we have to keep in mind when dealing with TDS. Then when you think of your application and when you set the, the material requirements, you then uh, start the search for um, information and the TTS is the usually the, the first source of information to to check all the uh, for the um, application material determination. Then when you continue your search you might find a material design guide of this material and there's also general literature and when you have a look at high performance polymers versus commodity polymers there's more information available for high performance polymers compared to the commodities so this is also keeping in mind so the higher you go up in the plastics pyramid the more information is usually available so when we have a look at the TDS, what are the typical properties? So we have physical properties, mechanical, impact properties, thermal, optical, electrical, flame characteristics, and processing conditions. Okay, let's start with the physical properties. So what do we understand under physical properties? These are usually the density, then a shrinkage, and molding shrinkage, uh, water absorption, moisture absorption, and the uh, melt volume rate. And here is an example of a, a snapshot of a, a TTS of A model, A1133, it's a PPA, the 33% glass fiber reinforcement. And there you see now uh, the density in the dry state and Sometimes it's also uh, shown the condition state because we have here aromatic polyamide. Here you see also the test method, then molding shrinkage in flow and across flow, and then the moisture, or in this case, water absorption 24 hours according to ASDM D57. Okay, let's have a closer look at this melt volume rate, M MVR and or melt flow rate so there are two different systems and also different standards like for example the isdm d1238 is the melt flow rates of thermoplastic by extrusion plastometer and then there's also the the iso 1133 which is called determination of the melt mass flow rate and melt volume flow rate of thermoplastics so in general what do they all have in common? common so you have here a chamber with your polymer you place in the pellets the barrel is heated, so you heat it up that they can melt. And then you have here the plunger and the weights on top. The weights 
you can uh, change. You you need to put so much weight that uh, the polymer uh, starts to flow through the dye, and then you have this extra date. And this is always done for the um, so you measure how much uh, polymer you get through the dye within the the ten minutes. So the test results, as I said before. Uh, you need to always then indicate the, the temperature and the weight you put here on the top and then you receive the 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 volume flow per 10 minutes however be cautious uh, there are some limitations so the first is it's a pressure limited measurement so you have one constant shear stress and this represents only a single point on the viscosity curve because you have only one temperature and one shear. However, we know that uh, thermoplastics are have a shear thinning behavior. So with, with higher shear rates, you have a different viscosity and a different flow rate. And when you think of injection molding, these are much higher uh, shear rates involved than compared to this um, MFR or MFR setup. Okay, let's continue with the mechanical uh, properties. So here we have uh, two main tests, the tensile test and the free point bending test. So with the tensile test, we can get the tensile modulus, tensile stress and tensile el elongation. And the free point bending test, we can obtain the flexural stress and the flexural modulus. Here again, example uh, of the previous material, the A model, you see the tensile modulus here. And then you, uh, also at uh, different temperatures. So these are already good. They have several data points, different temperatures. And when we look now at the tensile test, uh, the stress strain behavior can be quite different depending if I have amorphous polymer, semi crystalline uh, thermoplast, or elastomer. For example, here we have elastomer, uh, low stress rate, however really high strain rates um, then here this red curve is a hard and tough plastic typical for a polycarbonate we have a yielding and then the break then here we have a tough and strong plastic and then here the brittle we will not even get into the yielding curve so here we can obtain with this blue point the tensile stress at yield together with the tensile strain at yield and here we have in green the tensile stress at break and the tensile strain at break. So this is when you read it on the TDS, then you know already what is meant on this. So when you have only tensile strain at yield uh, and tensile st uh, stress and strain at yield, um, uh, you can already get some more uh, feeling for the for the polymer and what this is from the how it is uh, built up here now tensile tensile modulus and strength of various high performance polymers so i have he included some flu polymers we have some sulfones uh, pps um, then peak uh, polyamide pi ppi polyethamide and lcp and always in in blue the modulus in red the elongation and in green the tensile strength you see right that PTFE has a really, really uh, uh, big tensile elongation, have a less uh, tensile strength. And um, when you look at the PPI, here we have a high tensile modulus, however, a uh, low tensile elongation and uh, tensile strength is also in there. And depending on your requirements, you can choose them. You can compare those also over the different tempers and make your uh, uh, get your information for the material selection for your part. You know the three point bending test, example uh, polycarbonate. So we have again stress strain. Here is not the opposite. <clears throat> so we have the specimen and we, we bend in, in the middle <clears throat> with a certain, with the force till we have a complete bending. So we can obtain here then the flexural modulus and flexural stress at yield is here. And 
here it's also a rule of thumb, the currency of the flexible data in the three point uh, bending setup is only accurate uh, up to the 5% in strain. So you have here the 5% border. So when you go above, you see already the, the stress goes down. So you always have to look where the, where the yield is. Okay. I have uh, split this video in several parts and in the next video we will discuss the impact properties. And yeah, if you want uh, to know more information about polymeric, polymer engineering topics, uh, I have my blog findoutaboutplastics.com where we discuss uh, such topics. And in terms of material selection, I created two online courses. So the general polymer selection course and also polymer material selection for electric vehicles. And I will link you both the blog and the online courses in the description below. Okay, now we have reached the end of this first part. And I would like to thank you for watching and till next time. Bye.